this yellow. I don't mind yellow, but I think fried egg. I'm just gonna say, hey, hi dolls, it's me, Will the Finger Do, with the Finger Do review of RuPaul's Drag Race Espana Season 2 episode six episode six we are just burning through this season eh but before we get started i just wanted to show off a, a latest lar de souza illustration which is available on my redbubble store this is the friend of jorge design that lar came up this year and uh i just i'm gonna hold it right in front of me here and it is uh fabulous i love it there we are the the uh <laughs> The munchkins who believe in Jorge and uh, and uh, me and uh, this is um, going to be my official pride shirt for 2022. We had uh, the Wilma pride shirt, which was just the uh, color blocks with the Wilma sketches that Lar did last year. Uh, this one, I love it so much. We're going to make it the pride shirt for 2022, which means that all proceeds for this shirt will be going to Rainbow Railroad. Now, I have more information for Rainbow Railroad. It's a fantastic uh, charity. It's a Canadian charity that uh, makes uh, changes worldwide in helping getting people uh, from our LGBTQ community out of countries and situations that are violent and um, uh, not, not good to be in. And uh, Rainbow Railroad helps those people uh, escape those horrible situations. So uh, all the proceeds last year during Pride Month went to Rainbow Railroad. I'm just going to make this Pride shirt for the whole year. So every shirt that we sell, we, <laughs> every shirt that I sell off of Redbubble of the uh, Friends of Jorge line will uh, be going directly to rainbow railroad and uh for t-shirts i think that i think i get maybe about two dollars and fifty cents a t-shirt it's not a lot but it builds up as we stand right now i think we're close to five hundred dollars donated to rainbow railroad and i think that they said it takes um as much as 10 grand to get somebody out of a country each case can cost up to that with legal and all of the the things so we're nowhere near really helping one person but every drop in the bucket you know what i'm saying so if you'd like to help a great charity and get yourself some wilma merch the link for that t-shirt is down below in my description box as well as a link to rainbow railroad so you can just see what's uh that that charity is uh all about on your own and uh therefore if you'd like to donate to them directly you can do that as well there you go it's a lot I didn't think I was going to have a lot to say, but apparently I did. And now I'm thirsty. So, Jorge, drink me! Ooh! Where's the ice in this? You strained it out. Oh, I like the ice. It makes it cold. Mm. But on the other hand, more cocktail. Woohoo! Ooh, one more sip. Thank you, Jorge. So delicious. A pink pucker. Shut your face. Let's get to it. To say the queens were shocked to say goodbye to Onyx was an understatement. Well, not for everyone. Diamante, although sad to see Onyx go, came to compete. And part of competing is losing. And Diamante didn't come to lose. You can see this attitude rubbed a few of the other queens the wrong way. But seriously, Diamante said it best. She'll be the first in line after the show to make friends. To be honest... I've always felt this instant friendship that some of the queens develop on their season are misplaced. The competition isn't the place to build friendships, even if you're already friends. I'm just saying. To be honest, I'd have thought more than a few of them would be glad that they just got rid of some heavy competition. And yes, heavy competition was my drag queen in high school. Of course, Sharon was congratulated on her second win. And as far as Estrella was concerned, that was two wins too many. Her frustration at Sharon being either safe or in the top was obviously starting to show, poor thing. Something else that was starting to show was that there was no love lost between Marina and Diamante. After Diamante admitted to not knowing the whole lip sync, just the key moments, Marina started judging. But Diamante shut her down by pointing out that, well, she was still there and Onyx wasn't. Well, she's not wrong. The next day, Supreme showed up without a mini challenge. The queens were going to need every moment for this week's maxi challenge. 
a ball and not just any ball the ball was going to be historic because the queens had to show a look from the 10th century the 20th century and then create a futuristic spanish drag queen look from the 30th century to help them do that the pit crew hauled in some supplies and can I just take a moment to applaud the diversity of the Spaniards pit crew? That bearded 30-year-old, oh, gorge, that chewy bear, look at him, and that fierce hottie work in those eyes. Who doesn't love a little man makeup, I'm just saying, especially when man makeup was the name of my new fringe play. <laughs> and the materials the queens had to choose from were paper, metal, and plastic. Looks like the future is all about recycling. Speaking of the future, it seemed like Diamante could predict it. Because wasn't it her who was just saying it's been five episodes without a sewing challenge? Way to jinx it, Diamante, seriously. No, not that jinx, although I love that jinx. Good luck on all stay seven, jinx eight. Just saying. To say the queens were pleased was a bald face lie. Marina was just happy that she had a body for clothes and, well, good taste. I'm starting to see why the other queens don't like her. Right away, the queens got down to it. They rummaged through the piles and each other to collect materials for their final runway. There was no time to waste for these queens. What I can't believe is how many queens still haven't learned how to sew. No basic sewing skills. You don't need to be a couturier. You just need to know how to thread it, how to change a needle, and how to sew two pieces of fabric together. That's it. Done. If you know that, you're ahead of the game, clearly. Of course, not all the queens were helpless. Clearly, Sethless and Sharon are no stranger to a little hands-on creativity. That's probably why Marina asked them for advice. Why Marina thought now would be a good time to try pattern drafting I'll never know. My advice would have been stop pattern drafting. I guess she was taking a you'll never know unless you try approach. Well, Marina tried and now she knows. Her skills are rustico. At least where Drag Sethless is concerned. I'm not even sure Supreme dropping by to check on the Queen's helped. Most of them seemed lost in the task at hand. Of course, Sharon had a plan and was madly working on a cardboard dress. Diamante seemed to be the only queen smart enough to take a sewing class. Twelve, in fact. So she didn't seem as overwhelmed as the rest of the queens. As for the rest of the queens, they were singing that tale as old as time. What complete and utter woe to realize that I can't sew. Forget that 5 8 hem and say it once again. I can't sew. Thank you. The next day, there was some tension between Marina and Diamante. Marina felt her keen fashion sense would help her through, while Diamante thought she was an idiot. Starting to wonder if Diamante is avoiding making friends or just incapable. Lord knows she's not making it easy. Estrella was definitely feeling the pressure. Her friend Yvonne had written her a note that was only to be opened when she was feeling at her lowest. Well, now was the time. Uh, it was filled with love and memories of their friendship and soon had Estrella in tears. It was a lovely moment. And I think it helped her a lot. And then it was time for the main stage. Supreme looked purple. I'm not saying I didn't like what she was wearing, but... I thought it made her look like Kristen Chenoweth hosting the Kids' Choice Awards. Just me? And I'd be a bit remiss if I didn't wonder what was going on with Anna Larkin this week. She looks like she's auditioning to be a Muppet. No? Just me? Los Javi were looking as yummy as always, mostly because they were both wearing shirts that featured their nipples. Their eyes are up there. Who cares? <laughs> And joining the judges this week, the deliciously fabulous favorite from Drag Race UK, Charitza May, looking all kinds of gorgeous. Seriously. And then it was time for the ball. There were three rounds in total, and the whole shebang was kicked off by Sharon. Her 10th century look kind of confused me. She looked more like a member of Cirque du Soleil to me. The concept was interesting, but I'm still giving it a finger don't, I hate to say. As for Sharon's 20th century look, 
it was about wealth as well, but in a different way. This time she was talking cold, hard cash, particularly the euro. As nice as she looked, I was still underwhelmed by this runway, so I gave Sharon another finger don't. Oh, I know I'm a terrible person. Well, I might not be as terrible as I think her outfits were, but after her first two looks getting finger don'ts, I was worried for Sharon's 30th century look. Well, I shouldn't have been. This look was stunning. The simplicity of the corrugated cardboard, the half a jacket, and half her face painted gold. I loved it. What I didn't love were those gold cans hanging off of it, but I still gave this look a finger do. Still, it is the only finger do she got from me tonight, so. Estrella's interpretation of the 10th century was Joan of Arc, and although her makeup was falahales, the outfit was not. I feel like she had the chain mail and built a look up around it, which is too bad because it was underwhelming, and, well, that's why I gave it a finger don't. I was also confused by Estrella's 20th century look. She was trying to queer up Francisco Franco and dictators like him, regardless of her intentions. Her runway looked very cheap to me and, well, completely worthy of a finger don't, I'm sorry to say. Continuing with the military theme, Estrella was now a drag robot with... What were they? Robot platypus? Boob guns. <laughs> the fact that Estrella made this outfit herself aside, I didn't like it. There were just some basic fit issues where this look was concerned, but I do appreciate her having a theme. I had a theme too. My theme for Estrella was finger don't, I'm so sorry to say, which makes her a three fur on the finger don't front. But that makeup is flawless. Benedita von Dash's 10th century look paid homage to astrology, but to be honest, I felt like it was more of a reason to wear that moon jacket dress. Not that Benedita didn't look good, but it just didn't look 10th century to me, and her reveal didn't help either. That's why I gave her finger don't. Very rough this week. Benedita's 20th century look was inspired by Spain's first lady, Carmen Polo or La Colares. And just like the first lady, Benedita was dripping in pearls. I didn't get all the references, but I thought Benedita looked great, so I gave her a finger do. Seriously. Benedita's 30th century look had me at that hat. Look at it. I just loved it. I also loved her concept that there is no new fabric in the future and that everything is recycled. Seriously. Finger do for Benedita. Seriously, I loved it. Diamante's 10th century look paid homage to architecture, or so she said, except for the hem of that jacket and the design on her pantalones. I didn't see it and gave her a finger don't. I just didn't see architecture. Also, is anyone else getting tired of her skull caps? Just me. Diamante's 20th century look paid homage to Barcelona's Casa Batio when it was festooned with roses on St. George Day. Okay. I get that, but as for the rest of what she was wearing, it didn't make sense or make me think of Casabatio in the slightest. And what was with that mask? Still, I didn't hate this look, so I gave her a finger do. I just still don't understand the mask. I'll tell you what I did hate, that sieve on top of Diamante's head for her 30th century look. Even Ambrosi made a joke about it. I liked the concept of Diamante's look once she told us what it was. If she hadn't, I would have no idea what she was wearing. At least that black dress she worked on looked good. Still, figure don't for Diamante. She's one for three. That's not good. Thrax Sethla's 10th century look paid homage to the Glossus Ameliniasis, one of the earliest examples of writing in Spanish. Although the silhouette wasn't 10th century, I did like that the fabric was printed with these glosses. So I gave Sethla's a finger due. Concept is key, I'm just saying. I can't believe I said that word almost correctly. Speaking of concept, Sethla's 20th century look blew me away. At first, I wasn't sure. I hated the way that wrap thing just kind of ended behind her, but the more I looked at the outfit, the more I didn't care about that silver wrap thing. Did you see her wig? Completely made of wires. I even liked the Matrix-looking bodysuit with the zeros and ones on it. I mean, 
if you're going to wear a binary leotard, now's the time, am I right? There's <laughs> another thing you do for Miss Sethless. I'm just saying. As for Sethless' 30th century look, I didn't care where the concept came from. I didn't want to hear the backstory of a post-apocalyptic world. I just wanted to stare at what Sethless had done. Except for the boots and possibly undergarments, there wasn't anything she didn't create herself. That cardboard mohawk, the outfit. She even decorated the back of it. This gorgeous piece of innovation cinched a finger do hat trick for Sethless, and it was well-deserved. I'm serious. Marina's 10th century look was stunning to be sure, but what it had to do with the 10th century is beyond me. Paying homage to the weak god by being his bride? Okay. Although I don't get it, I'm giving Marina a finger due because, well, I love the look so much. There I said it. And she carried this wedding theme into her 20th century look, but for a minute, I thought she made this in the workroom. No, she brought it from home. I loved it. A wedding dress trimmed in plastic bags, brilliant. And her sticking her gum in her hair, hilarious. Where's this Marina when they're all in the workroom? Seriously. Finger due for the recycled bride. I'm just saying. I'm going to give Marina a finger due for her 30th century bride as well. I like the concept and I thought the outfit she made was fabulous. For a queen who decided to try pattern drafting yesterday, I'd say this look is more than worthy of a finger due. That's a hat trick for Marina. Seriously. And then Jirigi de Klee took the runway. Her 10th century Joan of Arc put Estrellas to shame, if you ask me. From the blonde wig to the articulated wings, this look was stunning and well-deserving of a finger due. I'm so serious. Jirigi's 20th century look was fun, but I didn't get it. Her whole reference to the 20th century being Swedish baby dolls with big old retro bush surprised me because retro bush was the name of my French play. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't catching what Jurigi was throwing. Even though there are worse things you could use to reference the 20th century, the fact that Jurigi used to watch this 70s porn with her grandma is the reason I'm giving her a finger due. More porn for grandparents. No? Jirigi brought the runway to a close with a Jean-Paul Gaultier Barbarella-inspired 30th century look. I, for one, was impressed that she made that dress and the gauntlets. It was adorable, to say the least, and that, in of itself, made it a three-for-three for Jirigi's three for finger due count. Sounds dirty. Supreme then announced that Sharon was the only queen who was safe. So she frigged off out of there. As for the rest of the queens, Benedita's eye contact and commitment to each look was a hit with the judges, and Anna loved her use of fashion. Of course she did. Marina was another one the judges enjoyed, although Ambrosi thought her last look fell a little short, while Jorigi's three looks impressed across the board. But it was obvious that Drag Sethless was a standout for the judges, and I think it was down mostly to her 30th century look. But the judges agreed. The story she told with all three of her looks on the runway was impressive. So it was no surprise to me that Supreme announced Drag Sethless as this week's winner. Here's to Drag Sethless. Well done. Seriously. Right time. Unfortunately, Diamante and Estrella's looks fell a little short compared to the rest of the queens. So I, for one, wasn't surprised to see Diamante and Estrella lip-syncing for their lives. This was a very emotional lip-sync. The music was emotional, the queens were emotional because they didn't want to go home, and the safe queens were emotional because I think they were all worried that Diamante might send Estrella home. Well, when the music died, it was Supreme who said that it was Estrella who was staying, and that Diamante had to sashay away. That's okay. Diamante's got to go get in line to make more friends. So, what did you think? Did the right queen go home? Were the right queens in the bottom? Is there a queen that's circling the drain as far as you're concerned? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And please feel free to share this video with anyone you know who you think is a 
as big, if not bigger, drag race fan than we are. And if you'd like to help support this channel or Rainbow Railroad, all the links are down below in the description box. Until next week, miss me! Ah, seriously, sorry. Oh, I'm running out of my pucker here. Oh my god, I'm so glad that that ball happened now. With only seven queens and not at the beginning of the season with 12. 12 or 14 of oh, 12. Oh. The balls are the hardest ones. It's just three looks for each queen. And by the end of it, I don't care. Oh, I don't care. Just glue it to yourself. <laughs> but it's it's getting hard to pick people to go home. I'm not surprised Diamante went. She seemed to be getting a, uh, a farewell at it that episode. She had lots to say. Uh, I'm worried. I'm worried about a couple of them. I don't know. Estrella's good, but she's not consistent. I can see her tripping herself up. I don't want her to, but I can see her tripping herself up. I'm also, I'm also worried. I think Marina really delivers in the on the runway, but she is falling short in the challenges because she's not playing well with the other queens, and she's got to fake it so she can make it. Seriously. I mean, I think 30,000 euros is worth screwing a smile on my face and pretending I like people. Certainly done it for less.